Hi, Phil Morrison from Driftworks.com here and I'm here with my LP640 project. It's been a while since we did an update, so for those of you that are new, uh, you should probably consider subscribing. We've done quite a lot. Uh, we've done ITB conversion. We've done an e-gear to manual conversion. We've done LMGT1 headers. We've already done the mapping at Emerald. And I decided to get super carried away and buy a GT1 aero package of the 2008 Le Mans car from Writer Engineering. We're here at TJR Bodyworks with my buddy Gaz. Hello. So I guess we'll just um, talk you through some of the stuff that we've been doing over the past. It's been here for a couple of months now uh, and progress visually has been slow so there's not been a lot for me to talk to you about but we'll just bring you up to speed on what has been done uh, and tell you the sort of overall plan for what the car's going to look like I guess. So front end gas, that was uh, that was a big challenge, wasn't it? Yep. The uh, getting that mounted properly. Just want to walk through what we've had to do with the splitter and everything. Yeah, the first part is the, the lower tubs all being replaced by Craig um, along with yourself. So there's, there's no mounting points whatsoever for the front bumper, the yep. lower splitter. Yeah. Um, sort of nose comb is completely different. Uh, the wings normally are attached solid mounted to the car yeah and um, so they all have to be removed all the framework have to go that's normally supports them and the bumper um so we basically have to rebuild it from that point um get the splitter solid mounted because of how how much aero it creates yeah we've got a nice picture of that i think yeah. the, the the classic Standing demonstration on. of whether a, a splitter is mounted securely or not so i'll put yeah. that in here um, um but yeah basically the even down to things like where the where the bonnet is the aperture that goes into there on the race car obviously it has a big radiator there for the all cooler um and it it doesn't have any luggage space this is a road car believe it or not and i wanted to keep that space so gaz has had to basically make the aperture for the bonnet seal here um which is quite a complicated job which also involved uh, creating new, um, new slam panel. Yeah, a new slam panel there with all the mounting points. So I'll just show you actually. There we go. So in here you can see it's not finished yet, and it's um, you know there's still quite a bit of work to do. But on the inside here you can see that we've just got this. We've got the aluminium plate for the floor at the moment, which is is that eight mil? Was it six mil? I think it's six mil. Um, which is pretty. Which, yeah, that'll be sealed in, obviously, all the way around. Uh, we, you can see the tow hook, which has been finalised here. So Craig created the structure for this, and then Gaz basically determined where that needs to be and uh, mounted it securely. You can see the all the work that we were mentioning here for the slam panel, the uh, rubber seal, which is super important and getting the right amount of pressure on that seal is also super important to make sure that you don't get air underneath the bonnet, um, which could be pretty dangerous at 200 miles yeah. an hour. <laughs> um, so yeah, on here, in here you can see that this side, the front side here, uh, you've got the bonnet catch sorted as well, but there's a flat plate here. On the front end of it, because again, as I said, there's no, um, there's no oil cooler going here, but I didn't just want a flat plate, so we've used the standard uh, LP640 look, nose cone and modified it here, which it's a bit hard to see, but it's basically, it has got comes to a point here, and it allows the air to then travel down the sides and 
the same direction as the vents and everything like that. So hopefully aerodynamically it won't be like a brick wall and also it won't send air where it shouldn't be. We'll have to wait and see until we do that one gun run that way. <laughs> and I guess uh, and uh, underneath that, um, supporting that splitter on the sides was a big thing as well, wasn't it? What have you had yeah, to do there? Yeah, um, basically rebuilt the box section that we removed originally when we took the wings off. Um, to bring mount right out to the outer corners, um, just to, to take all the bounce out the corners of it. Yeah. Um, it also will support the wings when they're finally mounted. Yeah. Um, and create a bit of a sort of crash crash barrier for it. Yeah. See, Gaz actually knows this car pretty well. Um, he was the the one who took on the colour change when I first yeah. bought it, which was slightly more than a colour change because the car was, as I've pre previously mentioned um, in another episode, it was uh, sort of on the cheaper end of the scale of uh, LP60, uh, LP640 Mercy Largos, and it did have its uh, fair amount of yeah. issues. Correcting um, a few previous repairs. Yeah. Um, re gapping everything, making it all line up and look like an original car again. Yeah, but this is this is compared to that. Well, that was difficult work. That was a few months' work, but yeah. this is way out of control compared yeah. to that. It's a bit different. <laughs> yeah, but you're also. Um, I should probably say that uh, Gaz Gaz is responsible for many of my stupid ideas and stupid cars over the years. He's um, he's a real big car nut himself. Um, I'll just quickly show you. Am I allowed to quickly, quickly show you this? This is one of his his own projects, snuck in at the back here. Um, and that's got, I'll show you the full story. So you don't usually see one of those in there. <laughs> so yeah, total car nut and also to an extent quite enjoys dealing with my crazy ideas I think. <laughs> different project. Yeah yeah nice to do something different. Yeah. So yeah uh, Gaz has over the years as we've just seen done he's, he's basically wholly responsible for why this thing looks so awesome my uh, E30 M3 project including uh, custom making the rear quarter panels, uh, the modifying the carbon fibre front fenders that we did for it, and basically making it look like the car it is today. He's also partially responsible for my mad drift car. He's had to uh, do various bits and bobs on this over the years, including was making too, wasn't it? yeah, making it was wider too, fenders um, when we did the front, wider front track. We widened the rears as well, so he ended up remaking the panels for that for that car as well, um, as well as my S15. What else have you done? Uh, the Hilux. Yeah, done James's Hilux, Starkey's S15. Yeah, as you can see, there's a few <laughs> Driftworks banners around here, and Rich, <coughs> Rich will kick my ass if I don't tell you that those banners are for sale on our website. So. <laughs> So yeah, no stranger to my daft ideas. This is just, you know, it's right up where right. there with the um, <laughs> the silliest ideas I've had, I think, really, isn't it? Um, so you can see here that you've started to take off the paint yep. off these lovely carbon fibre panels. I presume that's been a lot of fun. It has. Um, they're made really well, and the gel coats really thick on it so it gives you the ability to really flat it back yeah you can go a bit sort of hardcore on it to start with and yeah. then reduce down the grades to get the nice smooth finish again yeah and um, you majority of the parts you can probably just lacquer them now to get a nice original carbon finish yeah if we wanted um, to do that if you wanted to go that far we're not there no <laughs> yeah some of it we are so tastefully yeah uh, you can see obviously there's a mad contrast here and uh, this is kind of the wrong way around in a way so basically the car is going to be painted I think it, I know it's a bit of a shame but there's all sorts of things like uh, you can see the seams here where these vents um, are actually put in it like made separate yeah made separately and molded in so it would never look right if we just left it raw carbon but the plan is to have uh, the car the whole car one colour with maybe some details like these um, being left in carbon if we can do it if what's underneath this paint is good enough basically because it has to look right has to look smart yeah. 
the lenses are off the wings as well whilst we're working on them so it looks pretty awful with these without the lenses on but um, yeah it's also we can get, get rid of that paint yep. one of the biggest things and one of the reasons why uh, it sort of seems to be taking longer than originally expected is because uh, my original so you saw us doing the hinges for the doors on this and the great success that we had basically getting a standard heavy door to do the scissor action correctly um, at Craig's. Uh, Craig did an awesome job with that and creating all the structure and the damper perfectly. Um, but there was one compromise, there was always going to be a compromise with that and that was that basically we weren't going to be able to have the corner of the fender because the door as it moved actually came into this area and it meant that we would have to work out a way to cut this off and I don't know maybe leave it maybe leave it as a horrible looking gap I was relatively happy with that compromise because you know it's pretty mental to be able to get these panels on the car in the first place let alone with the original door with the original amount of travel that the door has when it goes up as well because the race car has next to none but Gaz wasn't really happy with that were you no. you weren't you weren't happy with <laughs> them rude. yeah it wasn't going to be perfect um, so Gaz basically has been changing the hinge mounting point which has basically meant redoing, undoing and redoing a lot of the work that Craig and I did yep. at Dynatalk and it hasn't been, been easy has it? <laughs> <laughs> it's been tricky but I mean, yeah. Craig worked out most of the basics with it, back to the original idea of moving the hinge. Yeah. Um, it got the positioning close, very yeah. close but the pivot point was still too far back yeah. towards the door um, so we moved it forward I think two and a half inches now yeah and recessed the hinge up into the door further yeah and that now allows the doors to hinge over the top of the wing like the original uh, panels did yeah um, does, does it, it open just, at the moment uh, the other side will uh, uh, that's got the um, tape on it though as yeah, well isn't it still, it should still oh, okay cool so now that will clear and yeah. give us this so it kind of lips over yeah. the fender which it didn't do before it kind of moved towards it, it the went fender down and forward and you can probably see there how much we would have had to chop off this if we'd have left it in the original position and yeah as i say gaz wasn't happy with doing that which you know i fully respect and uh, i'm glad that he's taken it on um, at the end of the day because it's going to make this car even better than i originally thought it would be but yeah, so that's that's really cool there. And what you can kind of see here is what Gaz is currently working on, which is that door to um, fender shape, basically. I went into the side skirt as well. So we basically, we decided that a lot of the RGT cars have a vent here uh, and it looks quite rough. So, some of them look okay, others yeah. look a bit crude. They're all done a bit different. Yeah, it's um, very racy, yeah. um, and some of them have like a big recessed vent into the door. Um, Which would stop you using windows. Yeah, so, sort, so. I've got, I've got, I've got <coughs> speakers in there, I've got windows, got door trim, all of that stuff is staying. Road car, road car, road car. Gonna keep saying that, <laughs> it's yeah, a road, road car. car. <laughs> so yeah, what I really wanted to do was come up with a, a sort of smooth um, blending uh, that sort of would work at least visually aerodynamically um, that would basically make the it would tie in the fender to the door to the side skirt so this is the RDT side skirt as well that we've got yep. uh, which we've chopped up and we're going to integrate into the standard side skirts because on this side <coughs> I think it's this side yeah there we go so on this side you've got the standard oil cooler and I need to keep that because we're not putting the oil cooler in the front end of the car like you would on the race car because we don't need to and because I want to keep the boot space. So yeah, that's been um, the current challenge is working out the shape of this. You can see there's a bit of metal on the floor where Gaz is starting to up, work yeah. it all out. Um, it's not actually as big as we first thought it would be once we've typed it off um, and opened the door up. It's 
from about 20 mil down to five in the center of the door and then it gets a bit bigger at the bottom so yeah the flare on the door is not going to be as aggressive as we first thought it would yeah um, but it seems to flow into the front fenders nicely yeah and uh one of the most important things is that we're then going to be able to uh, create the correct protection on the in inside here so it doesn't fire water up into the door because where the um the damper for the door uh the actual strut lift goes through the door it has to have quite a big hole in it um and it would just basically fire water into that hole and fire it into the door if we left that open so that's all going to be sealed nicely on the inside you can see guys are starting to build up the fenders here with some uh some more carbon fiber laid in there which will allow us to create the shape that we want um, wheel position is pretty much there steering slightly turned at the moment so it looks pretty close here but the whole idea is that we get perfect clearance under compression we get perfect steering as well nothing hits um, but yeah we'll just basically have a much neater much nicer line here um, all the way to meet the tire basically is the plan with the side skirt the plan is that obviously this is this is staying uh, this will taper in to the standard side skirt a little bit more than it does now i really really like the the way that the the lower part of uh, mercy largo specifically the lp640 really tucks in quite narrow i think it really helps with the the lines of the car and the the race car side skirt it's just very flat sided it's there for a reason it's not there for you know visuals it's not there to look nice whereas this should hopefully by blending them both together should hopefully create the look that i want and you can notice at the back here that um we've got the standard wheels on and it looks kind of lost <laughs> Uh, the reason the standard wheels aren't, are on at the moment is to help simulate the rear ride height. I normally run a 345 30 20 rear tyre, uh, which you can see here, which is huge. But basically, to get the balance right and not have a car with huge rake, um, I've just put these wheels on for the moment just to lower lower the back end of the car so we can work stuff out. I'll be modifying the suspension again at the back here a little bit and obviously making it work with some decent wheels. My the plan at the back is obviously the diffuser which you also see here that's going on. We've still got our plastic mounts that we made to mock up the spoiler at the back here. Uh, there's lots of body work to be done on the back bumper there's also a plan that uh, I've told Gaz about is that I want to slightly sort out the rear quarter panels. So I put a picture up on my Instagram a couple of days ago of excellent wheel footment on um, my car before when it had a set of work wheels on it. And from that angle, it looks like it's got perfect wheel footment. But the issue with LP640s or Mercy Lagos in general and a lot of the other Lamborghinis is when you look from the other direction, so from the front quarter of the car looking at the back wheel, you end up with this huge gap at the back here. Even if you've got, like I had, a uh, completely flush fitment here um, with a tyre literally a millimetre away from the arch and then the same goes here, really good looking fitment there you'd still always end up with this huge gap at the back here and I've never been a fan of it. So one of my ideas to keep it, you know, I don't want to go wide body on the back because it's already super wide. Basically the front end is going to end up being nearly as wide as the back as it is. I just want to pump out the rear arches just ever so slightly. So currently the working idea is that I'll be I'll be asking Gaz, I won't be doing it. <laughs> uh, we were going to basically look at uh, cutting cutting a line basically here all the way around and basically seeing whether you can you can see the kind of the arch naturally is at that kind of angle so what I want to do is keep it pretty standard but stand that up perfectly to basically allow us to 
to bring that wheel out it'll probably be an extra 20 mil i've worked it out to be uh, but yeah once again it's just going to be a case of cutting and then visually seeing what it looks like and we'll lean it out as much as we need to then gaz just building it back up from the inside um and make an outside with carbon and reinforce it yeah and, and then just a bit of finishing off on the outside it should be good yeah it's not it sounds horrific but compared to what we've done they with the front pretty single layer yeah. carbon anyway so we're not messing with any strength or structure of the vehicle no. And yeah, like in the grand scheme of things is what we've been yeah. doing so far, it's nothing. <laughs> so I guess that kind of, that brings you up to speed with the plans and the current situation of the car. Oh, there's one more thing. I briefly mentioned it to guys, yeah. I haven't told them the whole thing yet, but because we've not got these huge, ugly door mirrors, which poked out to about here before, uh, we've got a set of the writer engineering uh, mirrors which all kind of mount roughly there very dainty little things I was wondering and discussing with Gaz whether we could look at doing a little quarter glass in here for a little bit of better visibility forward and also because road car <laughs> and you didn't think it'd be that much drama to um, to do I mean, that be fairly straightforward because we're not going to interfere with the original glass and and no. the runners for that it's uh, it's a separate item yeah so i think we could easily come up with something yeah easily get some glass <laughs> for it. this is the classic um craig takes a piss out of me all the time but yeah the can you just <laughs> well, well why are you there <laughs> so yeah that that'll work out really well um there is still absolutely loads of work to do to this uh there is i'm not kidding myself it's an absolutely huge project and because both I and Gaz want it to be absolutely perfect when it's done. We're not rushing things madly. It will be done right. Uh, and we will spend whatever time we need to working on it to make sure that it is right. But what's the next stages then? Uh, it's going to be finalising the doors first. Um, yeah. Then we can look at solid mounting the wings into position. Um, final fitment to the splitter and the bumper. Um, at that point then we can start looking at under, under arches. Um, blending everything in nicely yeah. um, and then move on to the rear end. Yeah, the rear which supposedly is going to be easy. But, it's you know. easier in, <laughs> in comparison to It's still got some front. horrible um, um, vents and stuff to deal with, hasn't it? Yeah, so it stuff that needs gluing back in. There's not a major amount to do to the body other than the arches. Uh, yeah. The rear bumper is kind of a separate item that can be dealt with the majority of it off the car. Yeah. Um, but a lot of intricate parts that need finishing off correctly. Yeah, and then there's just basically there's a few decades of sanding and prep, <laughs> um, and then it it'll go in the booth, I guess, and yeah. be a different colour. Not a very exciting different colour. I am not painting this orange, just so we're clear. Yeah. Lots of people have some great ideas about what colour I should be painting this and what I should be doing with it, but I've already kind of mentioned what my plan is colour-wise with the car. Um, yeah not exciting but i think the car's exciting enough to not need a loud color on it um so yeah i guess that's probably about it we're uh yeah it's, it's currently a couple of days after christmas so guys very kindly came in and opened up whilst the place is quiet because normally like any body shop it's really noisy in this place so I've not really had an opportunity to do much. So yeah, thank you very much to Gaz for opening up and uh, showing us around. And yeah, watch this space. Uh, make sure you subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel because there's loads going on with this and my V10 E46 M3 and an Aston Martin LT4 uh, conver conversion that Craig's doing next door. So yeah, loads going on. Uh, my personal Instagram is Phil Morrison DW. Uh, where a lot of this stuff will end up before it comes onto a YouTube video. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.